Just as you are before your God.
of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence, when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked that a murder be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead of all of this we are witnesses. Now I, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has this brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be co converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O oh Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiration for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Bishop Candela, the parish communities of St. James, St. John before the Leighton Gate, and Our Lady of Guadalupe welcome you and express thanks for your presence. So the young men and women of the Catholic community of Bartlesville may complete their Christian initiation through the Sacrament of Confirmation. Just as the apostles journeyed from town to town to proclaim the gospel and confirm the baptized in the Holy Spirit, so you have journeyed here on the same apostolic mission. These candidates have been baptized in the Lord Jesus and have been nourished at the altar of his presence. In preparation for this day, they have heard and carefully reflected on the word of God. They have grown in an ever-deepening commitment to faith. Their parish communities have joined them in prayer that the seal of the Holy Spirit with an abundance of gifts may confirm them, and that by your ministry they may be sealed with the Holy Spirit. I invite the candidates to confirm for confirmation to please stand as I call your names. Jack Auschwitz of St. John. Simeon Zielinski from St. John. Ella Higgins from St. James. Joseph Jones from St. John. Harley Reyes from St. John. Caden Reyes from St. John. Chance Sumner from St. James. Evie Luton from St. John. Virginia Emeriterio from St. John. Thomas Mann from St. James. 
Mariela Salinas from Our Lady of Guadalupe, Tanya Salinas from Our Lady of Guadalupe, Thomas Parsley from St. John, Lillian Martin from Our Lady of Guadalupe, Maddie Wilson from St. John, Mason Plemons from Our Lady of Guadalupe, and Diego Lopez from Our Lady of Guadalupe. So let's congratulate our candidates. You can be seated. This, of course, was the strangest year of all to be preparing for confirmation in, so we are happy that you hung in there with it. And your catechists as well, they put in many hours, so we're very thankful to the work of the catechists and those who helped in your preparation. This is, this is a good crop. That's a, it's sort of like a harvesting, a good crop. This Easter time is a particularly graced time for us to be reading in our Bibles from the Acts of the Apostles. That's what we're hearing at Mass. And at home, and just when you have time for prayerful reading, to read from the Acts of the Apostles, you can place yourself, using your imagination, you can place yourself back at those scenes of the very beginning of the church, which begins with the apostles and some of the disciples hiding like scaredy cats in a locked room after Jesus has been crucified, not yet realizing that he's going to rise but afraid, scared to death, that the mob is going to come and get them and take them off and, and harm them as they have done their master. And as we read the Acts, we can see two moments, two movements, you could say, of faith in the life of these disciples. And I would suggest that we ourselves face those same two moments or movements in our faith life. The first one comes as the shock. As a, for them, it's a, a huge shock because they hear that Jesus has risen. It's kind of strange to us to think that that would shock them since Jesus told them throughout the three years that he was with them, Jesus told them that he must die and rise. But when they saw him die, they did not think he was going to rise. They thought probably he just was who knows what he was saying, some enigmatic thing. We didn't really understand. We never thought he would die. And then he died. And they saw him buried. And in many of their minds and hearts, with Jesus in the tomb was their hopes that he would be the Messiah. So when they hear that he's risen, that's a shock. And only slowly does it unfold in their mind and their heart what it means. If he has risen from the dead, then he is God. This is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. He died to save us from sin and death. That's the first movement, is simply knowledge. Knowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. We've got little baby children here, we've got teenagers here, we've got in-betweens here, we've got people older here. For all of us, whenever we first heard it, and we probably first heard it at our mother's knee, how many of you had little Jesus coloring books, right? <laughs> or, or little Bible story books? We learned all those things at our mother's knee, and so we had the data Growing up, we knew that Jesus was said to be the Son of God. That's the first movement, is the data, is knowing the, what you could say, the facts. But the second movement, and it's as important as the first, even more important, is the so what, is answering the question, so what? And that's a very personal movement. I can hear with a whole room full of people that Jesus is said to be the Son of God. But I have to decide in my own heart, what does that mean for me? 
if Jesus is the Son of God, if Jesus did die for love, die for me out of love, then what is my response going to be? That's the so what. And that question, hanging on that question, is a person's whole life. Because the only appropriate response to that question is yes. To give the Lord everything. To make a decision each day renewed that I will be a disciple of Jesus who died for me. I will be the disciple of Jesus Christ who is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, who loves me and who is my Savior. I will give my life to Him. I will form my life based on His teaching. I will unite myself to the church that He has created. And I will witness to this faith in the world. That's the proper response. And that response can't be made except in the Holy Spirit. That's what we see in the Scriptures. Those men were hiding like frady cats in the locked room until Pentecost, until they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then they go out. Then they head out of that locked room. Then they get arrested. Then they get flogged. Then they get beaten. Then they have their property stolen from them, then they're threatened with death, and they go through all of that continuing to preach because now they've become disciples. And each day they renew this pledge to Jesus, I am your disciple. You are my Lord. I am your disciple. I will make you known. That's for us. That's what we celebrate this evening is this coming this gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who empowers us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important for these young people to receive this gift. Tonight you could say you're standing in a very powerful witness, as a very powerful witness, simply by your stepping up and saying, yes, I believe, I want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to live as a disciple in the world. So we're very happy to be here to impart that gift to you now. So I'm going to invite those to be confirmed to please stand. I need that. And here I'm going to help you renew your baptismal promises. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. It is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord, Amen. And now I'll address myself to the congregation gathered here. It's our part to play in this celebration. Please join me as we pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. And with the priests gathered here with me, we're going to place our hands over, over your heads.
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I'll invite you to come forward as you practice to be anointed. Stanley, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Okay. St. Patrick, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Saint Ignatius, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy 
So now we stand together as we offer these prayers of intercession. For his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have, that all people who have one maker and father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Praise and glory of his name. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all the parents, brothers, and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, guide king, kind and admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you will bestow on the world all that is good. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your God, you take away the sins of the world. Be sad and no peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
And when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay And when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment. First off, Bishop, Thank you so much for coming and spending this time with us. We're appreciative sure. of you to be here. Yeah. It's always a blessing to come uh, uh, together as a larger community, three parishes that are represented here tonight. So please, all candidates, please stand. And let's congratulate you again for this. this is And as, and as Bishop said, a very special thank you to our catechists, Jim and Leona, you did a great job, Cassie and, and all the others that were involved. Uh, it's been a beautiful time to be able to come together and do this live without the Zoom, you know, so we're starting to do those kind of things together. Uh, have a blessed evening. I think there's a reception afterwards. We've got some pictures to take and things like that. If you have any gifts to give, we're, there's a table for each one of them, and we're going to bless those gifts right after uh, we're done with Mass here. So thank you so much. Please stand for the final blessing. Are you going to do a song? Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go forth, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. God.
Time to sing your song.